All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be going over a hurricane season update for you guys, giving you a look at the dry air, the sea surface temperature conditions, and the state of our current La Nina slash El Nino conditions. For today's comment of the day, I wanna know, since it's been so long since I've asked you guys this, how do you expect this overall hurricane season to end up going with what's already been done and what is expected to come? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also be sure to like the video and comment down below because those two things help me out a bunch. Thank you so much for that. Let's get straight into this video. First things first, we're taking a look at some satellite imagery. As you can see, there is not a lot going on in between the Caribbean and Africa. That is due to a bunch of dry air that is set up over that region that is basically hindering any tropical activity from taking place from this point forward. Now let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures across the globe basically uh, and as you can see we take a look let's just take a look here at the Pacific and if you look kind of south of Mexico there offshore well offshore of South America there in the Pacific Ocean we see a lot of blues going on. There is some oranges but generally this is a basically developing uh, La Nina. We're expected to go towards La Nina and the important thing here is that usually leads towards more hurricane activity during La Nina's. So we're gonna take a look at more things to do with that La Nina in just a moment. But let's take a look at the Atlantic as well. We see the Gulf has a lot of yellows. We see that basically most of the North Atlantic has a lot of yellows and reds and oranges, especially offshore of the East Coast, offshore of Canada, south of Greenland, areas like that. We also see some blues there in between Africa and the Caribbean. That is a negative, uh, basically, it is colder than normal temperatures set up in our main development region, or MDR is what we call it for short. That is going to slow down development a little bit moving forward unless we see some dramatic warming. It is evident, though, that we do have colder than normal temperatures in there. It has been that way for quite a while and is expected to stay that way for quite a while as well. Here is the seven-day change. This is how things have basically moved in the past seven days. We see a lot of blues there in our uh, La Nina region, again, south of Mexico there, we see some blues, some reds, but mostly blues. Uh, offshore of the east coast, we have seen some cooling. The gulf has warmed dramatically, and in the MDR, it's been kind of neutral. The northern portions there of our main development region are a little orange, and the southern regions are a little bit more blue. Overall, the Atlantic has stayed pretty neutral because we see some significant warming areas and some significant cooling areas, uh, but not... And it hasn't swayed in either direction too badly. If anything, it's still warming up overall. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on and take a look here at our chart for the El Nino. We're going to take a look at some other things to do with the El Nino slash La Nina. We're going to take a look at some charts for other areas of the oceans. We're going to take a look at the dry air soon. And then we're going to even take a look at vorticity and some upcom upcoming potential cyclones soon. Now here is our ENSO chart or El Nino chart. And as you can see, things were cooling for a while and we were heading more towards the La Nina, but now they've turned around again and are heading in the warming direction. Very interesting there. Uh, and some people might even be thinking, is it possible that there's gonna be an El Nino? Uh, and I'm here to show you why it's not very likely at all. Almost impossible. So here was our T depth anomalies here on May 23rd and basically the lower on the screen you go the deeper in the water you go there in our ENSO region the higher up on this range you go towards the top of the screen that is closer to the surface there in our ENSO region you can see there was a lot of warm water set up over this region potentially meaning an El Nino was coming but let's take a look at how things have changed and this is July 17th look at how much cooler waters have taken over in this area and are basically heading uh, towards the surface of the water. This is why we expect a La Nina to take place because these cooler waters are taking over and they're heading towards the surface. And once they reach the surface, we will see those La Nina conditions take over. So let's take a look at some more charts for some different regions. Here's the Gulf of Mexico. As you can see, it's been warming. It's in the positive area. The Caribbean has been all over the place, guys. It has been very volatile, just heading warmer, colder, warmer, colder, warmer, colder all over the place. Uh, and it's hard to predict what it's going to do. The Atlantic MDR, though, has stayed below the 0, 0.0 line since the beginning of May. Uh, and I don't expect that to change just because it's been so consistently below that 0, 0.0 line. So we can pretty much expect 
a below normal sea surface temperature MDR, which does have major implications. I think that could possibly lead towards the Atlantic hurricane season being a little bit more underwhelming than we originally anticipated. I still anticipate an above average hurricane season, uh, but I do think that it is possible that it's a little bit less above average than we originally anticipated. Here is our North Atlantic overall anomalies. And as you can see, it is just overall warming significantly. This is mostly due to the North Atlantic, very far North Atlantic, that is, the Northern North Atlantic. Uh, and this area isn't going to be a big player in our hurricane season. So it's making this chart look like if you were to use this trying to figure out what the hurricane season is going to be like, it would seem like it's going to be a very above average hurricane season. Like, oh, the waters are very warm, uh, but it's only basically warmer for the most part where hurricanes aren't really going to be developing. The only area that's very favorable right now where hurricanes are definitely going to be developing is the Gulf of Mexico, which is obviously a very concerning thing, but usually that's not enough to take us into a far above average hurricane season because still a significant amount of those storms have to come from the MDR. Just like last year, that's how we got such large numbers. So I don't anticipate us getting into those higher numbers like we did last year. I do anticipate a slightly above average hurricane season at least though. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the dry air, that dust, and how it's going to progress over the next 10 days. We're also going to take a look at some cyclonic vorticity, potentially some waves coming up soon. We're going to take a look at all of those things in just a moment. Now here we are taking a look at that dry air and dust, and as you can see, there is a ton of it in between Africa, the Caribbean, uh, and almost to the east coast there. As you can see, by the time we reach hours 51, so that's going to be kind of later on Monday, uh, we can see that there is a lot of dust all over the place uh, for the Caribbean, the main development region offshore of the east coast. Uh, and even as we head towards the 30th here of July, it's still pretty widespread. It's just not as potent anymore. We're seeing kind of those deeper purples and blues mostly. That is a little bit less dust. It's still around, but it's there. And by the time we reach about 4 a.m. on Tuesday, August 3rd, you can see that for the most part, most of this dust has dissipated in the Atlantic. And that's why I expect early August to be when we mostly get the hurricane season back on track and picking back up again. I think that's a high likelihood at this point that we see this hurricane season really get going once we reach early into the month of August and especially here in the very western regions of our Atlantic region. So the Gulf, the Caribbean becoming more and more favorable because there's hardly any dust whereas there was a lot beforehand. I think it's going to become a lot more favorable as we see less and less of this dust overall just in the Atlantic. Quickly let's take a look at that vorticity and this is looking at about now and as you can see there's not much going on that area offshore of Florida is a bit of a disturbance. We do have a disturbance there offshore of Africa, which will basically break up because of so much dust. But by the time we're reaching about August 2nd on the afternoon of Monday, August 2nd, we can see that there is some vorticity there offshore of Africa. Things will be becoming more favorable and we're going to want to be watching for any disturbances that make their way into the Caribbean, the Gulf, offshore of the East Coast, etc. Because those are the regions, like we said earlier, that aren't going to be having any dust any longer as we head into early August and potentially as we head deeper into August that dust might continue to dissipate even further and further and further which is usually what happens later in the season usually later in that season the hurricane season as we get towards September and October there's less of that dust coming into the Atlantic and that's why you usually get a lot more activity and a lot stronger storms too because there's nothing to slow them down especially if there's no shear uh, which would obviously be a very concerning look if we head into a La Nina there will be less shear and there's already going to be less dust as we head later in the season, could be disastrous results. For today's confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6 because my, my confidence is increasing a bit, uh, but that's still, you know, in that moderate range. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think we will have our next tropical disturbance after the one that's currently offshore of Africa? An epic Roblox god 45 said, well, I think in a couple of days, there is a wave with deep convection that could be a storm. Uh, and I think you're probably talking about the one offshore of Africa. I think taking a look at the next couple days, it's not looking too favorable. But as we head towards August 1st and beyond, there's definitely some potential, especially offshore of Africa. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, 
Dovey Nagel, Lara LePan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary, Sean Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hairfarms1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button down below, leave a comment down below, and be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.